have to figure out how to take that off. And everyone's here? Yeah, that's the problem. Is there anything that comes up on the screen is visible? So a little uh, bad at Sorry? We'll figure it out. Come on, Rumi. Sorry. Did they score? Yeah. Who scored? Uh, the McMaster? No, Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa, right? Uh, Ottawa's in black. No, Ottawa, right? Waterloo or Waterloo? Carlton just had a chance.
Is that the... Who just scored that? Uh, Ottawa? Or Carlton? Ottawa. He just spiked it. Who's winning the women's side? I still don't think they realize that water is for them. Yeah. I'm gonna capture the TV. Gifford, the TD. Good job, Nick. Tanya. Stream. Yeah. For me? Fuck your oh oh 
still get those tendons to throw around. Yakov is at 5 3. Okay, thank you guys. Say hi. No, say hi. How was Guelph doing? Uh, they seem to be doing well. So one of the things that happens is that when you're zooming in and out, it actually shows up on the broadcast. Okay. The wide... So you forgot your adapter? Yeah, it sucked. Back on now. Playing in last over fast? No. We're just staying on the time recording. Is this being videotaped right yeah. now? Yes? Let's go, Dwayne! Get us another one! Myself to Shar Singh, who is not married, so yes, uh, unfortunately he got away from me. Jokes, jokes. Carlton here playing against University of uh, Ottawa, Ottawa in purple, or maroon. I believe that's maroon, right? Lee, Lee nods. Carlton in black, and uh, Ottawa leading right now.
Carlton has come out quite hard in this game, even though they played basically the whole line, uh, the same line, all of last game. Down here. Bringing the score to 6 5. After uh, a few early breaks, they've just been trading points for the last little bit. If you are joining us on the live feed, well, I, actually, it's pretty unlikely at this point because our live feed is down, but it's going to come back up soon. If you're watching this afterwards, uh, you'll have known the results of the games uh, earlier. This is uh, field number two, the finals will be here next. And on the other field, we have Guelph in yellow and white playing against uh, Toronto, Tua in black. Our aim is to get every single uh, showcase game broadcast. So the showcase games might only be on Saturday and Sunday, but we will also try for Friday. Uh, this is all dependent upon weather. We'll have a better camera, so hopefully we can also get it to you in uh, some sort of high definition. And you won't also have all these things on your screen uh, to as great a degree. Calls out of bounds. I would like to look at that on a replay, though. What do you think, Bacon? I was moving the camera pretty quick. It came out of nowhere, though. I, I, the observer was not on the line there, but he's made the call, and as per agreements, it's out. Lady Pole goes, uh, goes up and Ottawa gets it right back. A bit of a different wind here coming from the southeast. Normally, most places uh, come directly from the west. Not as much attempting to chase down there, but uh, boxed out. Ronaldo cutting deep here. He's coming for the uh, easy in cut here, but it might be a stall count violation here, or a pick. It's either the second or third game of the day for the observers. On the near side, we have Yakov. I'm not sure who's on the far side. Some sort of call. Probably a disc space or a, uh, a foul. Seem a little bit chippy at this point. Now, 
appears to be an injury now. It's tough when a tall guy comes down on top of you. That's uh, Hagen who went down there. And Good bid by both players on the desk. Sorry, Jen. Toronto's doing so well against uh, Guelph. Uh, who's doing well? Toronto? Yeah. Well, it's... The thing is... I mean, both of those were top four teams from last year. Yeah. So I think that's pretty reasonable. 
overall. Do you, do you, uh, does Sean have any vocals? Uh, Bomber. Yeah, and Sachin to Bomber was a big connection yesterday. And I think probably is today as well. They set up in a split stack, and Bomber is uh, short on the stack, and he just cuts across and deep. Yeah. And then comes back in. If he's covered deep, it just goes long, and Sachin can play long anywhere on the field. So, I mean, it's a great play. You have to cover him on the end, and it's highly unlikely you're going to beat him on the end cut. Yeah. Time out over here on this field as Ottawa's lined up on the far side. Carlton's coming in now. Ready for the disc. They're taking the first lead of the game. 7-6 coming from way behind. Uh, next point, I believe, takes them to half. And I believe Ottawa is pretty gas after the last game, but they did get a buy, so uh, I think it should be pretty reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. Yes, uh. If Carlton scores, I believe this will be half. Uh, Ottawa getting a bit of rest there. Uh, both teams have taken one timeout this half. This is not lined up here deep right now. Oh. Unfortunate throw there. The handler knew as soon as, uh, or the thrower knew as soon as he released that, that it was not a good idea. The wind is actually coming from down the field towards the camera position, so viewers, uh, the wind is basically a headwind from this point. Uh, and has affected throws because it's opposite of what it was yesterday. Ray with the disc on the sideline, puts a laser down. Uh, easily pulled down, I would say easily, but standard. Called not in. Uh, actually, Observer has called in. It is a point. And that should be half. down the tent? I did not. No? No, the tent is not pegged down. Oh, no. no whatsoever. <laughs> Big tent at the, uh... Oh, the food? Uh, it's been blowing over. Sorry, I'm really tired. Did you be holding it? I think I sleep. Did you party last night, then? A little. Yeah. But we've been here every morning at, like, 7.30. It's pretty... Huh. Yes. The volunteer... I guess it's... Bomber! Did you get that? Yeah. Let's call it out. I don't know about that. We don't have the best angle. I think we do. No. And everyone wanders down the field. Figure out what's up. Try to order pizza? You don't have to order pizza. Would you like some pizza? 
I would eat a little. A little? Do they deliver it right here? Yeah. Pretty nice. That would be nice. It wouldn't, wouldn't not. That would be nice. It would be nice. Hey, guys. You're going to mute this later, right? No. It's live. Oh. Perfect timing. Oh. I, I'm not sure uh, if that's entirely an honest cue. Sachin is a beast. Uh, unfortunately, really messy cutting upfield. this down. You know what? You can do what you like, sir. <laughs> I believe staking it down would be in our mutual interest. Hey, let's watch the video. Oh, there you go. I was just wondering about your tech side. The website? No, no, no. I got some skills. That's right. Always prepared. Pumping oh, everything through the iPhone. Taking so important. Yeah, yeah. It's all picking up. 
Yep. Yo. Oh, yeah. Keepers. Cheeky. Hmm? Looking for a big hug. Says so. Cheeky, I'll get. I'll get. Oh. Turned out quite well. Another interception by Ottawa. I suppose he's hanging out a little bit deep now. He's looking for a hook here on a mismatch. Uh, who's that to? Uh, I believe that was to Hagen, but Hagen didn't put his tight in. Uh. Alex is. A little bit off in this game. They're pretty tired. Nice break throw there. Nine six. Now we're gonna go over to the other field just really quickly to watch that game. interesting that people are disappointed by the performance of the blue team. Why? I, I, I think B teams in general won't perform well. In fact, Most. No, I, in general, I don't think they're supposed to. Because as soon as you get players that have developed to a point where they're good enough... Hey, yeah, I'm a big fan of Ultimate. Um, <laughs> it's nice that we had everyone out today. Um, Well-organized tournament, great, great weather, good turnout. I'm um, looking forward to cheering on these teams today. Thank you, Adrian. Adrian, he is a natural deep back. Are you, are you alive? Yeah. All right. Hi, all five fans. Uh, I, I think that's pushing it. That's <laughs> is that pushing it? Five is a. Uh... Are you recording the whole game or live yeah. streaming? Live yeah. streaming. Oh, what's well, uh, to like? Uh... Live.imultimate.com. <laughs> Carlton with a disc again, a uh, pull that went oh, quite out of bounds. Nice. Uh, it was pulled up early on the field, then there was a turn, and now there's another turn. Seems like a common theme. Certainly, it's, uh, it's a little bit of life experience at the same time. I mean, these teams have only been playing together for a week and a half. 
maybe a bit longer, two weeks. Players tend to get in their heads a lot more as well. Okay. We tend to get in their heads a lot more. But getting back to the conversation that the B teams, I think B teams in general, they, once the players develop, they have a place to go. It's not like you, in the A team, you get better and better, you're going to get, you know, you're going to move up to another university team. Yeah, unless your A team is amazing. Unless your A team is amazing, but they're usually the point that if you get good enough on your B team, you're going to get, get to the A team, right? It's inevitable. Yeah. Well, not fully. Yeah. I think, yes, you will get to the point where you will have B teams that are very good, but we'll still have frustrating days. And you're going, it's that lower end, right? It's the lower end of the team. Just like we were saying in these B teams. The number of turns we've had in this point, bad passes, etc. Where is the team? Kiva? 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 No. No, it doesn't sound right. And even if we got it right, which it probably is, it would still sound wrong. But that's all. <laughs> I mean, who, who wants or who cheers about burning lettuce? Really? <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> oh. Nice. Just a bit too much float. The wind is coming from approximately where the, the disc is right now. So it's not a straight downfield headwind. Right there, we got a great read on the disc. Read on the play as well. Left is uh, played deep right away. Can you go around? Can you go around, please? Ten six. Carlton. Carlton apparently now taking up residence here in London. Cheers of our house. It's nice to know they have some tradesmen in their midst. Exactly. It's normally you consider high education not to get their hands dirty, but Carlton very much into house building. Or at least taking over houses. Time out called. <laughs> Both fields now relaxing. Uh oh. Hey Pete, is that Jen? Pete, is that Jen's dog? Uh, yeah. Okay. This is from. How are you guys doing audio? Audio is near us right now. Joining us now in the commentator's tent, Pete McLaughlin. Yo, yo. Uh, yes, Pete McLaughlin. Lynn. McLaughlin. 
McLaughlin. McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Oh, this game going? I think he's going to well. Uh, we should step around to the front side over here so that uh, Bacon can actually see us oh. and, and frame us appropriately as well. Me amo, Tosha. This is Pete. Uh, over there, Bacon behind the camera. It's a slightly Pete, different. Senor. Senor, Senor Bacon, or Spanish love, as we call it. Spanish love. I think these fields are. What's your field being the games that you played with Western this weekend? Uh, what's been your general thought on that? Uh, we played against Guelph, and they were strong too. Like, led by Cam Harris, Cam kind of Yeah. Be a strong contender for sure. Uh, now, Cam, Cam appears to have been injured slightly. I heard that yesterday, but today he's been, he's just been doing good. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good news for both the Doing uh, well. And, uh, and jokes. Well, I think it's pronounced jokes. Jokes. Sorry, jokes. I apologize. Jokes. Uh, yeah, that's cool. No, they are a joke now. <laughs> it's true. Uh, however, it's been a lot of uh, many young players here. You have many jokes players. Uh, but <coughs> now, of course, Phoenix players in this game behind us. Yeah. This game that <sighs> might actually be getting away from us. So I think we can step to the side here so that Bacon can Good concentrate idea. on the actual filming. But can uh, I did get a chance to play against Ottawa U yesterday, and they you got to respect them for their genius. They're quick. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. So I'm just going to update the score here. <laughs> but then we can continue our banter. Because apparently the... Uh, uh, I don't think that's necessary. Banter is always necessary, Peter. Also joining us here outside the commentary hut is Geoff. Uh, Geoff Chan, who's been coaching the uh, Waterloo men's B team as well as helping with the women's team when uh, John is not over there. Hello everybody. Uh, how, uh, what big teams have you played so far? Um, we played Queen's A and uh, we played Guelph. They're both looking extremely strong this year. Um, Guelph has a very, very sick aerial game with a lot of tall bodies that are good at leading the deep throw and going to get it. Um, Fiends A uh, actually plays very, very disciplined, right? Um, they run a good cutting system and uh, they clog very, very little, which uh, doesn't give us a whole lot of opening when playing D with them. So I'm just going to step around here. Yeah. yeah, it's actually been pretty interesting because yesterday I watched Guelph and they didn't seem that strong. Mm -hmm. like, surprisingly, didn't seem that strong. Carlton was also having a bit of a rough day yesterday. Uh, today, both these, both these teams have been looking very good. Um, Ottawa, surprising to be in the top four. I mean, you'd expect Western to be up there, but Western unfortunately matched up with, uh, excuse me, sir. Bless you. Bless you. Excuse me, uh, Guelph in their quarterfinal match this morning. And uh, it was a bit of a wipeout, but they were playing with their lines. Uh, Western is opted not to have an A B team, but rather one big team. Mm -hmm. uh, and that helps with development. You're going to have some of these players graduating in a few years, and we don't know who's going to come in. So it appears to be a good, good move on their side at this point. It isn't Nationals. Uh, Nationals is probably going to be a completely different story. Right now, though, Ottawa is a surprise story. Yeah. Uh, in this top four. Ottawa looks extremely speedy and uh, they're playing very, very tenacious. They're not giving up on anything and uh, if they get caught off of guard, they're uh, very, very quick to make a big move run to catch up with their checks. But they're playing very, very intense. But um, I didn't get too many chances to see Carlton play uh, yesterday. Um, but uh, today, just looking at the play, like their strength is um, is their handling. Um, actually, with Carlton, uh, yesterday I heard there was a bit of a fight against Laurier. Uh -huh. um, at least one punch was thrown, is what I heard. At least one punch was thrown. God damn. Indeed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey. Yes. So I think uh, Carlton has definitely toned it down a little bit uh, today and even after that game. However, I think at Nationals, you're going to need a lot of observers. Yes, I think so. Uh, the intensity is 
it's starting to get uh, up there. While overall these teams aren't as strong, I, I think. Yeah. Is it going to be a pop? Um, so I talked to Zach, and he's going to give me a ride. So you can just take the Toronto people. Okay. All right. Well, it's always important uh, when you're playing to play with intensity, but if you play too intense, you start getting tunnel vision and uh, your emotions can run away with you in the game. Uh, as you know, I have been apt to do in my long and illustrious touring what? career. Or I, rather, long and not so illustrious touring career. So I, I think that's, uh, that's partially true. I think um, the issue with these teams, and especially the, uh, the younger guys these days, is that they're bringing intensity off of a really tough uh, national season, like an actual touring season, club mm -hmm. touring season. Yes. Uh, and then they come over here to uh, university in what is almost an off season, and uh, they're still going hard. They're still used to going hard. Not everyone can level. But overall, I think that's uh, that's better for the game. Um, the the longer and um, harder and more intense people play, the quicker they'll develop, right? Um, and the faster uh, a team develops. It's just important to not lose um, sight of the fact that they're not playing at a club team level, playing at a university team level. And you've got to be a little bit more forgiving of your younger players. Uh, I think that's possible, but I think these players are just too young to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have players here that have uh, had the experience to lead teams at the level that's needed. And at the same time, some of these teams that do lead, or captains that do lead, uh, don't condemn anger and a lack of spirit. And there's certainly been a lack of spirit in some of the games. I mean, we've seen it. That's nothing new, nothing controversial in terms of the statement there. Uh, it's something that we really do need to work hard on. There's the, the bumping and grinding. You know, can't really comment upon that too much because it's not, uh, it's not bumping and grinding everywhere. But there certainly is the, the pushing on the mark. And I think repeated, repeatedly that has actually caused some of the newer players to have a lot of issues. Yes. And that is uh, definitely an um, issue with, uh, with my B team um, this, this weekend. Uh, just, uh, some of the players just aren't completely sure on uh, the rules uh, governing what the defender can and can't do on the mark. And this is why it's important to know the rules, to know what a disc space is, mm -hmm. right? To uh, actually call the disc space. And then if your disc space call isn't being respected, to know the call, the violation, to stop the play so that you can explain what the rule and the infraction is to the opposing team member. Um, I think it helps if, uh, if players do it with like a good attitude. Right, uh, and a calm attitude, and uh, if players can be less chippy with one another, uh, hopefully that will result in better um, games and better spirit without loss of intensity on the field. Uh, I, I agree. I think I've definitely seen that play in international play. Mm -hmm. You can get some very high-level intense games, uh, and it just happens over time. That many players uh, actually do run into issues. Uh, Ray coming there to make a bid, but huge grab, huge grab. And what I actually really enjoyed really seeing that little play just there was that uh, the auto player, after grabbing the disc, right, um, right, went to help Ray Ortega up and did not spike the disc, right? And uh, that is something that I am very very displeased with in um, watching uh, high level ultimate is spiking of the disc downward into the ground, tuckwing the disc. Water? Oh, no, thank you for the water. Thank you. I okay. do not yeah, believe okay. that. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll have a look. Thank you. Uh, I do not believe that that adds anything positive to, to the game. Yes, but it's something that, again, is not condemned. And you know what? A spike, if it can be a spike, and certainly they've tried to contain it. But this is not the yeah. But most sports are simply raw from other sports in terms of behavior and expectations. Right, I don't mind a um, good natured celebration after a uh, point score, but um, to, to me, spiking the disc contains a lot of connotation.
when I play, I always try to respect the player. I may not always succeed at it, but that is what I'm always striving to. Lee, Lee, yes! Oh. Uh, we, of course, have no respect for anyone, <laughs> which is why we're able to be uh, pretty chippy, Yep. Uh, etc. Uh, well, we're, well, we're savvy veteran players. I, I, would, I would hardly say I'm savvy, uh, but a bit of a oh, bouncy wow. throw. Hospital pass, but Carlton comes down with a disc. I don't think that's the throw that Ray wanted to make in any shape, way, or form. Uh, that, that pretty much bounced. It didn't go as far as he wanted it to. Maybe it was tipped on the way, but I don't think it actually to us. Hucks to the end zone. Is that in? Uh, observers are calling it in. Observers and the point. In. Okay, Tushar, I'll be uh, leaving you. I'm going to check out, see how our women are going to do in the last game. All right, good luck. It's always nice stopping by. Thanks, you. See you later. Bye, hey, buddy. So I said, uh, Ottawa, pretty big surprise here. McGill also, I uh, was expecting them to make top four. They're having some issues cutting right now. Uh, I think just at this point in the season, they, most teams don't have a cutting system in place. And they're having just issues in general. Soft cap horn there uh, going now. So after this point, uh, we'll figure out what's up here. But observers are actually running the timing here for this game. Uh, so McGill not finishing top four. They are uh, finished top eight, so we should uh, find out generally what's going on. Uh, from those I've spoken on the team, they're not pleased with the performance. They think they're a top four team. I think they're a top four team. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens later on with, uh, with their game. Waterloo also making the uh, top eight. Uh, also... Western making the top eight, but they lost their uh, fifth place semi against Waterloo. Uh, but as, as I said, they're, ex they're playing with their lines. So partially expected. And they've had quite a bit of turnover as well with regards to some of their top players. This poll's going, uh, Obi. Gives us a bit more time to chat about these teams. Guelph playing strong. Unexpectedly strong, but they've really figured things out in the last couple of days, and the, the play experience has really helped them. So, good solid tournament for them here. Toronto, professionally strong. Sachin's really helming that team quite well. Bombers cutting well. Jack McDonald switched over from. Seriously. Just Tanya. It's all good. Sorry about that, taking away the uh Yesterday, uh, Toronto was by far one of the most serious and uh, well-run teams, I think. They were very focused, uh, especially in the morning. They continue to, doing, uh, continue to do well. Uh, timeout called here? I believe timeout called here on this field, so we're watching the uh, Toronto Guelph game at this time. Zone has not been played as much today as expected. Roy 
shirt. I'm not going to agree with that. I used to wear a Roy shirt once. Exactly. I did drop it quite a, a bit, though. Uh, but I think that's just anticipation. It happens. You don't drop it all the time. Sometimes it's okay. Okay, so we talked quite a bit about open. Let's uh, we're gonna chat a little bit about women's. Don't think we have the camera position at this time in order to actually show you a women's match, but after this uh, semi's open, we'll actually try to show you a bit of women's. Um, I think we can actually move tables and things over just enough. No, ah, well, we got this game. Um, I'm just going to chat about women's a little bit very quickly. We haven't had the chance this tournament to really film them, shoot them that much. We haven't watched them play. One of the things that uh, has really stood out in my mind is how strong the Queen's women have been. Queen's women, just phenomenally uh, strong overall. Uh, quite impressive. The other teams, uh, because it's not nationals, have had some issues at this time. Okay. I can film. You want to eat? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now in the soft yeah. cap, game to 14. This time, uh, Queen's women looking quite strong. Um, McMaster had a really good game. It seemed like a significantly long game against uh, two loves, so Toronto women. They, that was quite a hard game from what I saw. The soft cap horn went, and the game seemed to go until hard cap, and then even after hard cap, the game went for another 10 minutes, uh, maybe even 10, 15 minutes. Then immediately they've gone into a Queens game. They're playing behind us right now. We'll try to get you a little bit of footage if we can uh, during the next break on this game. But uh, unfortunately, not here. We'll try to get a lot more and balance it out at Nationals. Ray with the disc here. You owe a bit late on the setup in terms of uh, defense and Carlton just setting up quite well. Relatively easy, straightforward point. Mm. Luckily, most of the action happened on the left side of the screen there. Right side, of course, obscured by the logo, which I forgot to took off, take off at the start of the point. It's gotten significantly cloudier. Very little sun now. Flat light. Good for us. Because we don't have the sun in our eyes anymore. Women playing well all around. Uh, Waterloo Laurier putting in a combo team here a little bit. Uh, I think one Laurier woman playing on that team. Uh, and that's just overall, I think, so that they get some sort of practice. Laurier is going to try to get a women's team together. Uh, quite impressive. Toronto uh, women's actually with an A and B team here. Hagen here with the disc. Center there going to the horizontal stack here. There's a deep strike right away. Uh, 
and an injury on that as well. But uh, foul call appears is coming at the same time. Puck coming back. Did Queens just win over there? Okay, so Queens women now heading to the finals here at Eastern. Knocking out Toronto in their semi. Toronto coming off a tough game against McMaster, a game that for all intents and purposes should not have gone for as long as it did. No contest. Yeah, let's zoom out a little bit here. Trying for a hammer over here, but looking like a double break. Oh. <laughs> I do apologize, I'm a pretty bad cameraman. Foul called on the initial break. I get another chance here to actually film. Alex Bush on the mark, no contest. play will be played again. Uh, travel call there on the initial throw, so we're back on our reset. Disc is in. We can break again. Point. That might be game right there, but we'll check. And that is game 14-10. Yeah. Now our post-game analysis by me. Was weather a condition? No. Both teams uh, did not really struggle with the win. Equal number of throwaways. Uh, the win really stayed the same the entire time. It's actually calmed down a little bit now. I think the difference there was Ottawa ran a very short line consistently. Carlton uh, really mixed it up. Also appears they did not have as hard a quarters as, uh, as UO. And consequently, Ottawa, while they came, did come out strong because they did have a bye break, they faded uh, towards the end of this game. They they were leading 6-4, I believe, at one point, uh, and then after that, it was just turned on by Carlton to, to pull away. Uh, will Ottawa be a threat at Nationals? Uh, possibly, but I think uh, some of the other teams are going to start getting it together. Uh, there's also going to be a loss of a few players from this UO squad uh, that won't be making Nationals. We'll find out more, of course, in our write-ups. We'll have some uh, pre-CUUC write-ups, as well as some, uh, some post-CEUUC write-ups. We're, uh, I think Carlton, strong, and will continue to be strong and get stronger. They really cleaned up their cutting, by far one of the teams uh, that actually have improved their cutting since the beginning of the tournament. They've uh, been more consistent, they've 
gone into a vertical as opposed to a horizontal most of the time, and that's helped them out with a lot of issues, uh, especially uh, with one of their plays being that they'll uh, threaten deep and then just come in for the under. So they've at least got some sort of cutting system going right now. Uh, the other teams haven't quite gotten that at this point. Uh, we'll find out now who's coming up in the finals, uh, whether it'll be well, it'll be Carlton, but whether it'll be uh, Toronto or Guelph facing them, we'll find out shortly. Looks of it, it might be Guelph. But I'll go find out.